I want to take you back to 2004. Well, I mean, sometime in the 2000s, at least. I was two years old then. But I witnessed what I would consider to be some of the greatest crossovers in animation. The Jimmy Timmy Parars. And I gotta say it every time. Yes, I know I pronounce it weird. Get your comments out of the way now. Jimmy Neutron. Boy genius. Timmy Turner. Boy! It may seem like an overreaction, but these three specials have forever set a precedent for me for cartoon crossovers and how they should be handled. Nowadays, they can seem pretty rushed, forgettable, or just consist of nothing but references for the entire runtime. But I like to reminisce about the days when Nickelodeon gave two of their most popular shows three one-hour long specials to do whatever they want. I mean, for Christ's sake, it just works so well. You have one show about a boy who's got all this science and technology, and this other boy who's got magic, with one being called Jimmy, and the other being called Timmy. That is just- that, that is just the most perfect coincidence ever. I could talk for ages about each one of these in great detail. Maybe I'll make a video about them on their own someday, let me know if you would want to see that. But, to sum it up before moving on to this video's real topic... The first one is a really fun experiment. It's less of a crossover and more of a... What if Timmy took Jimmy's place and Jimmy took Timmy's place? The pacing is very strange. After the two switch places, we basically just forget about the Jimmy stuff for the next 20 minutes. And after Timmy finishes his conflict in Retroville, we jump to see what he's getting up to then. I would have preferred more interactions between the two, but at the same time, it's still really cool and fun with the highlight definitely being seeing the two Switch styles. I don't care that Timmy looks weird in CG because the concept alone is just really cool. The second definitely has to be my favourite of the three. It's the one I watched the most as a kid, and I think it's because it focuses more on the Timmy versus Jimmy aspect of it. An issue I usually see with crossovers is that the two characters meet and immediately become best friends. I think having them butt heads is just a way cooler concept, so seeing Jimmy fighting Timmy, you know, science versus magic, it's just freaking sweet. Feels like the first one laid the groundwork for the whole fish out of water stuff this sort of crossover could explore, leaving this one to entirely focus on the characters and how they work off of one another. And finally, while I would definitely consider the third one to be the weakest of the three, I still would never call it bad per se. We've already seen each character explore each other's worlds. We've already seen them duke it out. Seeing Jimmy and Timmy meeting each other just doesn't have the same wow factor it did in the first two. But I don't mind because this special sort of realizes this too. I mean, it literally just starts with Jimmy looking through a portal like, Whoa, look, there's Timmy Turner. Like it's just some regular occurrence for him. So it just purrs them up together and lets them have fun for an hour. We've seen them butt heads for about two hours at this point. So it's nice to see them get along for a change, and try to have a good time with each other despite realizing how different their personalities are. So yeah, while it's definitely not the most impactful and the story really just seems like it isn't worthy of being this epic finale to the trilogy, I still think it more than makes up for it in terms of the character interactions. It's a joy just seeing the two of them together again. It's like they were made to interact or something. But after these three specials, Jimmy Neutron was cancelled. The third Par R was the last new episode of it to air on TV. So who is Timmy gonna meet and team up with now? Spongebob? Lincoln Loud? Oh no. So Butch Hartman's final cartoon he created before leaving Nickelodeon for good was 2017's Bunsen is a Beast. It's bad. Not gonna go over it too much, because I already briefly talked about it in my video about all of Butch Hartman's field projects, but it's clear why it was the least successful of his main four cartoons and only lasted one season. It's just annoying, and the epitome of every complaint ever directed towards one of his shows. Annoying one-note characters? Yep. Constant sound effects? Of course. Characters that scream every single line. Well, it just wouldn't be a Butch Hartman cartoon without it. It just feels like at this point, Butch was completely creatively bankrupt and was desperate for another show. I think a big issue that he has is that he's almost too versatile. He always brags about how many show ideas he has. Apparently, he said Bunsen is a Beast got picked up just because of an executive walking into his office and seeing the drawing on his desk or something. And while I agree it's not a good idea to devote your life to developing one standalone idea, I mean, at that rate, you're not going to get anything done. Isn't that right, Mr. Enter? But it's the age-old saying, quality over quantity. Butch can have as many cartoon ideas as he wants, but it means he's never going to be able to properly spend the time creating something substantial. Because almost all of his cartoons come off like quick, on-the-spot ideas in the hopes of capturing the same luck he had with Fairly Odd Parents or Danny Phantom. What if there's a school, but like, they're all dinosaurs or a girl who can turn into a bug or something? What if, what if there's a boy and his neighbor is a b b beast? Hmm. But yeah, they actually made a crossover between this show and the Fairly Odd Parents to help push viewers towards Bunsen. And you may be thinking, oh, you mean that two-minute short that came out when the show was first airing? But no. This was a full 22-minute crossover that earned around 10 episodes into Bunsen as a Beast. Also, speaking of that little two-minute short... And I've never seen anything like it before. What's up? It's me, 
Hey, Bonson! Can I just comment on how much better of an idea it would have been compared to this? That one combined all of Butcher's shows, not just the most popular one with the least popular one. We had Danny Phantom and Tough Puppy there too, it was pretty cool. And hey, it was neat seeing Bunsen not animated in Flash for once. Whatever, it's too bad. Also, Timmy and Danny act like they don't know each other, despite them both meeting before in the Nicktoons games, which had continuity and referenced the events of the Par Rs, meaning they are canon no matter what you said. I really wish they didn't cancel that Nicktoons movie, I wanted it so fucking bad. <laughs> so without further ado, let's just see what we have in store today. Could it possibly live up to the Jimmy Timmy Par? No. One of the hardest hurdles to overcome with a crossover like this is figuring out a reason for the characters to meet. Jimmy Timmy handled this perfectly. Timmy needed a science for a project and therefore wishes to be sent to the greatest lab in the universe. It's simple but perfect. What happens here? So we open with Bunsen telling his friend Mikey about how today he's gonna meet his furry friend Cosmo and they already know each other. Oh, that's it. Today's a big day, Mikey! We're going to celebrate my six month friend anniversary with my good friend Cosmo! There's no impact here. It doesn't feel like the writers were all that excited at the opportunity of combining each of their worlds. They just meet in the most uneventful way possible. They just have a portal to Dimsdeal. Wow, exciting. Again, remember how cool it was to see Timmy and Jimmy heat each other for two specials? It was a proper rivalry. And that made it interesting, it makes complete sense for these characters hating each other. But I guess that's just too complex for this show now, everyone's friends all the time. Hooray! The conflict comes from Crocker trying to capture Timmy's fairies. How, how special. But this time he's teaming up with the classic antagonist, Amanda from Bunsen is a Beast. Otherwise known as a literal child, what a team up, I'm so intimidated. I want to try and describe the plot of this episode, but there's nothing, just simply nothing. It genuinely feels like Nickelodeon forced them at gunpoint to make a crossover between these new shows, and nobody was interested in doing it. Not even Butch Hartman. He couldn't even be bothered to step in and write or direct this one, he wasn't involved at all, he didn't give a shit. And remember, it, it's not even a case of a good show crossing over with a bad show. This is season 10 for Early Odd Parents, aka the bottom of the barrel. I know, I know you're probably getting sick of all these Fairly Odd Parents videos, but... Well, first of all, it's been six months since my last one, I deserve this. But there is just so much I want to say about this show. It was once my favourite cartoon of all time. And the video discussing the entirety of season 10 is definitely something I'd want to do at some point. But to sum it up, the animation is terrible. Midway through season 10, they switch to Flash and it just doesn't lend itself to the style at all. It's way too fluid and the characters feel lifeless. Timmy has gone from a 10 year old to a 3 year old. He he's so, so short and his head is massive. It just looks bad. And they don't even draw the furry's feet as little triangles anymore. They're rounded off. Whose bright idea was that? Then we've got the characters. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, here we have the one note stereotypes. And that one note is an E. Every character just screeches their lines and they tell one simple joke with them over and over again. Cosmo is definitely the worst case with this, they literally treat him like an infant. Cosmo, shiny object! Ooh, shiny! Wanda, take it away! The running gag throughout the episode is that Cosmo can't perform the wishes he's given properly despite him being able to do that just fine for 10 seasons. I hate it so much. Again, they really just don't know how to fill the runtime. So Cosmo and Bunsen are meeting to celebrate their friend anniversary. That's it, that's the plot. It's just going through the motions. None of these characters have anything to do. Bunsen's friend Mikey just spends the whole runtime making dumb wishes and by the end he has to learn, you know, maybe he shouldn't have been asking so much of Cosmo and Wanda. But this character development is motivated by nothing Timmy warned you like 50 times not to make so many wishes. But then halfway through they decide to just have Timmy's dad pal along for the rest of the episode because he's brain dead and doesn't realize that Cosmo and Wanda are furries? Speaking of, why is Mikey allowed to be with Cosmo and Wanda? Wasn't that against, oh I don't know, the rules? You know, the rules that states that Timmy must keep his furries a secret and if anyone finds out they'll be taken away from him? But I don't even know why I'm bringing that up because by the time season 10 rolled around, the staff had completely given up on even attempting to follow any of the rules. Cosmo and Wanda just casually talk to whoever they want now with no consequences. Where is Chloe? Why does this show have such a fascination with introducing random characters, then removing them from the timeline expecting nobody to notice? I didn't even realize this until recently, but there was a point in the show where they just straight up removed Poof and sent him off to school for a while. Then remember Sparky? He, he just disappeared. I guess Timmy wished he'd be taken right back if you know what I mean. <laughs> and season 10's big selling point was Chloe the new girl in town. But they didn't even bother bringing her in here, I don't understand. You know what else I don't understand? 
how these two shows somehow managed to mix worse than Fairly Odd Parents and Jimmy Neutron. On the surface, it may seem like they both share the same Butch Hartman art style, but there are so many minor inconsistencies that stick out even more because of this. Like how her and Bunsen as a beast are usually just random clumps of circles, with Fairly Odd Parents being really straight and more simple. Same goes for the backgrounds, or how Bunsen gives characters slight highlights at times. Jimmy Neutron and Fairly Odd Parents animation styles couldn't be further apart, so they ran with that and even made jokes out of the 2D vs 3D styles. It's not only funny, but it's genuinely really cool to see them pull it off to... Mixed results. What do they do here? They make a joke about Crocker's ear being on his neck. Sad old man with ears on his neck who's going to grow old alone with a hairless cat. But it's hardly a joke. They really like pointing that out in later Fairly Odd Parents episodes, but it's not as funny to me because they're trying to joke about an awful design choice and make it seem intentional, when I know for a fact Butch 100% did not even realize he put his ear on his neck. I know I've been jumping a lot between points in this video, but it just baffles me that this even exists. It's just a group of characters pissing about for 20 minutes with nothing to do. It ends with Amanda betraying Crocker and capturing them all, but then for some dumb reason they all get out and escape and have the best friend anniversary ever. Oh my god, I'm so happy for them. So in conclusion, Modern Fairly Odd Parents really depresses me and this is the perfect example as of why. Honestly, I would recommend checking this crossover out, as it's also the perfect example of how not to do an animation crossover. I don't have a joke to end this on, I'm in too bad of a mood now. Butch Hartman bad, give me likes. There, is that what you wanted to hear?